What's up guys? You are on the air and off the books with Beth Ann and Samantha. And today we are going to be talking about a book that we recently read. It is called Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. And I did like this book. Um, I don't know if I liked it as much as like the, um, oh, what's the series we were reading? The, um, are you talking about, about the, the Josie Quinn series? Yeah, the Josie Quinn series. I don't know if I would like it, if I would say that I liked it as much as that. Um, um, are they, like, comparable, though? What's the book you read for squ- Squapsies? Squops- Squapsies. Squapsies. Oh, I read um, The Silent Patient, and yeah, I did like The Silent Patient a lot better. Although our coworker said, um, Lori and Trisha said that they did like... Um, this book behind closed doors a lot better which was surprising so if you like family mystery thriller yes like family oriented like crazy drama like this is the type of read for you which Lori, i think and trisha really really like gravitate towards like the like screwed up family dynamic kind yes. of a thing um which is kind of the silent patient yes and um a lot of the other things that they read. So if you hear them on any of our podcasts, Lori um, Hugley, who is the head of the South Branch, and then Trisha Shively, she's our, she's the head of the adult and teen department, our direct boss. Um, then if you hear them at all, or if you want recommendations like that, we can get you them, and they will be like pros at trying to find you, all of those things. Because I think like hearing slash reading this book i don't know if that's like my kind of thriller i really like yeah. josie quinn a lot more than i like I the like, detective mysteries a lot more than i like the family yeah stuff i think the tension is so much for me that yes. it's like so close to like a real life situation behind behind closed doors right but <laughs> pun intended that it's just like and maybe that's why they like because it it's so suspenseful and it's so like i don't know it's like It's almost like, ooh. (laughs) Yeah, it was more like, it was more infuriating than it was twisty and scary. There were not really any twists in this book. So if you do like a lot of twists and like mind-blowing like revelations, this is probably not the book for you. But if you like stuff like... um, That comes to a good resolution. Yes. That comes to... um, Like... The Perfect Wife, books like that, or... Yeah, then this is definitely the book for you, and I think you'll really enjoy it. But um, it does have some trigger warnings. Yes. Um, Domestic abuse. Obviously, well, I I won't... We won't say anything else, because from here on, it's going to be a lot of spoilers and stuff. So if you do want to read it, pick it up. Um, I think I would give it, like, maybe like a three and a half. Yeah, I think that I would give it... 3.8 and the only the issue was for me is that when I first started reading it I felt like I was in a different time period as in and Nolan got that vibe too oh really that we were reading in like a 1920 setting like it it was just odd and I think it's because it is a book from um the UK so it is based in the UK, and of you course felt they like do. It was like staged in the 1920s. I didn't yes. get that. Everything was well. When you read further on, everything's very proper, and they're like having these luncheons. Yeah, and, that's true. Like the society is different. And like yeah, you feel like you're in a time jump, and you really don't like historical fiction. Right. Yeah, and that's that's how it felt to me a little bit. Um, but I'm I'm going to just read you the description of this book. Um, yeah, the little synopsis, so you can kind of get like a feel of what we're talking about, um, and then we can like because we're not going to spoil in. it for you. Oh, we're not going to spoil it. Are we going to spoil it? I thought we were. Okay, we're, we'll spoil it, but we'll read the um, description and then we'll say, "Hey, stop here." Yeah, and then you can go pick it up and see if like this is something that you want to read. Is when did it publish? Like, is it relatively new? Um, I want to say 2019, but I'm about to check. Yeah, that's um, not too bad. But people really love this author. Yes. And um, she does have, I think she does have a few more books that she has written. Yes. And people rant, rant and rave. So this don't, obviously, like, 
you don't have to like you can like other things that we don't I guess it's comparable to It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, and that book is super popular right now. Yes, yes. Um, okay. true. So here is the little synopsis. Okay. Everybody knows a couple like Jack and Grace. He has looks and wealth. She has charm and ele- elegance. Elegance. Elegance? Yes. Elegance. Why did my brain have an aneurysm? Okay, she has charm and elegance. <laughs> He's a dedicated attorney who has never lost a case. She is a flawless homemaker, a masterful gardener and cook, and dotes on her disabled younger sister. Though they are still newlyweds, they seem to have it all. You might not want to like them, but you do. You're hopelessly charmed by the ease and comfort of their home, by the graciousness of the dinner parties they throw. You'd like to get to know Grace better, but it's difficult because you realize Jack and Grace are inseparable. Some might call this true love. Others might wonder why Grace never answers the phone or why she can never meet for coffee even though she doesn't work. How she can cook such elaborate meals but remains so slim or why she never seems to take anything with her when she leaves the house, not even a pen. Or why there are such high security metal shutters on all the downstairs windows. Some might wonder what's really going on when the dinner party is over and the front door is closed. Yeah, so obviously, stop here if you don't want to hear anything we have to say about it. But obviously, this is about domestic violence. Yes. I mean, seriously. Like, the description really... Honestly, the synopsis really gives you everything. Like, beyond that, it's just details. Right. Does that make sense? Like, this is your skeleton. Yes, and it's very... The synopsis is very straightforward to how the book goes. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, there's really no deviation. I mean, obviously, it's like your stereotypical, like, situation where this girl finds this guy that's too good to be true. Yeah. And then she, you know, gets to know him, and then immediately he wants to be married. Yes, and this girl was definitely, I think she was definitely blinded by love, because as I was reading, I was I was reading, and I would go over and be like, I can't believe that this guy is doing this right now. Or, like, he would, he would <laughs> throw up a lot of red flags for her in the yeah, beginning. Yeah, super but she red was flags. So, she needed someone so bad that she, like, forced herself to believe that what he was saying wasn't sketch. Yeah. And, and what he was doing and not allowing her to do. And, like, it was like he had his hand on the back of her neck. The entire time. Yeah. And she was justifying it so much in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And, like, I think she just craves a home for her, like, a secure situation for her and her sister. Because she was her sister's caretaker. Yes. That she was willing to do whatever it took to be able to have that kind of security. Even though he was the monster. She just married the monster. Right. I guess if there is a twist in this book, the twist is that this entire time Jack is, like, keeping Grace hostage. The first time he he keeps her hostage is they get married. Everything's fine. Her sister, um, she has autism. She falls down the stairs, and her sister tells her, like, Jack pushed me down the stairs. Yeah. And so they – everything's fine. They – they got married, um, and then Jack just leaves. They go back to the hotel, and he leaves, and he, like, does not come back. And when he comes back, he says, we're going to Thailand right now. And he's just being rude. He's being verbally abusive towards her, and she's and like, what the heck is going yeah. on? Like, you were perfect up until now. And basically, he takes her to Thailand to make her realize, you are my captive, and in your mind and I'm doing this because I want your sister I don't want you I want your sister because she can be more controlled than you can be yeah he's just basically this narcissistic like psychopath yeah like very full of himself like it and that's creepy I mean that gives it like this really ew like grungy feeling to the whole situation he's like using her for her sister who yeah, can't defend herself. Yeah, especially when she has a and disability, stuff. and it gives you like the "Why am I reading about this?" It's kind of yeah, and it grimy. It is grimy. It's but obviously that's like the point of it, right? But I just feel like I just feel like that's the the problem is is that I want more. Yeah, it was very. Um, 
like basically the whole book was her trying to escape and like trying to trick him because he was very he was very tricky himself like he her friend had given her a book and he took the book before he gave it to Grace and he had circled um, or shaded letters in the book to try to trick Grace and make her friend and make her think her friend was like trying to help her. Yeah. But Grace at this point, she's been tricked so many times, she realized it. Like she had hope at first, but then she realized, okay, this is probably him doing this. Right. And so she gave him the book back and pretended like she didn't see anything. Yeah. And I guess if you really like if that's enough for you, like his like tactics and like the dynamic that they have between them, it's not a bad book. It's just like I think I wanted to be like completely stunned. Yeah. And I feel like we anticipated that she would, of course, be free from him. All would be well. I like, wanted her. I want. She did escape, but I wanted her to escape in a different way. Yeah, because ending alert. Um, she just locks him in a basement, and basically he dies of like I think dehydration. Yeah, so he was down there for a long time, yeah. locked in a basement, which to me is kind of unbelievable because. How can you be down there that long to die of dehydration and not be able to ram yourself out? Right, yeah. But he did have the whole house kind of, like, locked down. And he did have her in the basement, so maybe he had, like, a reinforcement door or whatever. It just wasn't clear enough for right. me to, like, think that he couldn't get out of his own situation. Right. He was so smart, like, up until now that he literally got trapped in a basement and now he can't Behind get out. a locked door. Right. Behind right. a closed door. Right. And her friend... Her friend, the main friend in the book, I think that the whole time she does know that something's going on. Because at the end, her friend picks her up and takes her um, to the airport. And her friend is like, hey, they found Jack dead. This is what happened. Like, drilling into her mind, this is what happened. And this is what you need to say happened. Because her friend knew that she killed her. her But she she knew that that's what she had to do to stay alive. It's just so weird that her friend wouldn't try to help in that situation. Service yeah. announcement, if you ever feel like somebody's in danger, please try to help them. Like, yeah. I guess it's just a sticky situation because you never know if you're going to make the situation worse or not. So. Yes, but always try to help. Never yeah. let somebody be in a situation where they're suffering or abused. Like, do your best. Yeah. <laughs> but, like I said, it wasn't a bad book. It's a good read. Mm-hmm. Um, still it's suspenseful, thrilling. Yeah, you read it in, like, a day. Yeah, and... I don't know. I think the only thing... I think why I didn't like this book is because I don't particularly like reading about, like, domestic abuse like that. It's not that you didn't like it. It was just very, like you said... It was very disturbing and, like, red flag from the so beginning. I think you were so frustrated because, like, nobody wants a situation like that. And I yeah. think that's the appeal of it, is that you're reading about a situation that you would never want for yourself or anyone else. Right. And it, it makes I think, you on edge for that reason. I think it would have been different for me if he was, like outright like oh i'm i'm like rude from the beginning like i'm not going to pretend to be this nice guy and yeah but that's not the trap right which is i think why i was just kind of like creeped out by it i don't know and it is supposed to be creepy and grimy like that is what you're going in for you're going in for the like ew this makes me feel disgusting kind of thing like like how dare he treat his wife like that and how dare he trick somebody into something like so permanent only to abuse her for somebody else like that's the whole appeal of it but for me it's just like like oh yeah and also another it enrages me it enrages me and another trigger warning is there is animal abuse in one part so if you don't want to read about that which that part was sad but if you don't want to read about that don't pick up the book because you'll be Because I know a lot of people are really extra sensitive about animals. Yeah. Like, you can kill people all day, but, like, if you touch that dog... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm never reading you again. <laughs> so, if you don't if you don't want to read about that, well, obviously nobody wants to read about that, but if that's going to ruin, ruin your life... for you. Then Sorry. probably don't. Probably do not read this book. But, otherwise, if you really love thrillers, you're really into, like, the family thriller, crazy, crazy husband, crazy boyfriend, crazy girlfriend dynamic, this would be a good book. Yeah. Hostage situation, um, kind of a thing, then definitely pick it up. Um, Trisha and Lori really, really loved it. So I feel like if you pick this podcast up to listen to it, 
because you wanted to hear our opinion. I think you should go based on their opinion of it. It's not that we didn't like it. We wouldn't recommend it because I would recommend this to people. Yes. But for myself, it's not a category that I would like to read more yes. of. But I think that if you're picking this up because you really like that line, definitely read it. Yes, and we do have this at the library on audiobook and in physical copy. Yes. Um, I do not believe that it is on Overdrive or Hoopla, so. It is on um, Overdrive. It is on Overdrive, Because okay. that's where I got it. Okay, so it is on Overdrive, so if you like to read ebooks or you like to listen, this is available for you. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any questions or if you've or read you this wanna, book. Yeah, tell us your thoughts about it. That'd be interesting because maybe it'll change our mind. Yes. And you guys should definitely tune in next week. We're going to be talking about our beloved series, um, second book of the Inheritance Games, Hawthorne Legacy. Um, I really, really, really love that book. Beth Ann is almost done with it. 50%. Yes. She is She is on a roll. I am with, with this, which is really... Sh- I read 97 books last year. Yeah. It's crazy. Which... Absolutely. You would never guess. No. That I, I would have guessed like maybe 20. Yeah. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Just the, for the podcast. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz I'm so slow, but honestly, I was so shocked when I tallied it all up cuz I like to keep stats. Um and yeah, I uh this year I'm hoping to beat that. Yes. And then your goal is what? My goal is I around 160 books. I think you're going to like double that easy. I hope so, but we'll you see. You read so much more than I do because yeah, you're so quick I at it. I've, I've found my, my book genre that I really love right now, so I'm going to try. But um, you guys out. should also definitely come upstairs and check out our displays. I just did a TikTok display, so all of you book talk lovers that are on book talk and buy all their books because of book talk, just like I do, <laughs> come check out the display. And um, I think Brittany has a display up right now, um, YA display. So you guys need to come check those out. Yeah, and absolutely. And talk to us for book suggestions. We'll suggest books to you all day. And or if we can't have a suggestion, we have somebody who will. Yes. And we also have a feature on our um, library page. Um, it's like a personalized book suggestion. You can fill it yes. out and we can give you some book suggestions. And that's a really cool feature. And that comes directly from our Reader's Advisory Library, Melissa. Yes. And she does a fantastic job. Yes. And she always reaches she out to her hard. coworkers if she she needs help with that, which is really cool because we get to suggest books too. So, yes, join us next week for the Hawthorne Legacy. We're really excited to do that one. And Already a 5 out of 5. Yes, 5,000 5, out of 5. <laughs> and we hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Bye. Bye.